The Loop Deck software has just been updated to version 5.2, and they have made some improvements to the usability of the uh, application user interface. So I'm really pleased about that. Still a little ways to go in my mind, but uh, never mind. I'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end as well. Uh, so let's have a look at uh, the release notes, shall we? And it's pretty short, really, but it does belie uh, the improvement that has taken place. So uh, first of all, a redesigned action panel for a better and easier action management. That's going to be the main focus of this video, really, because that's the place that it was really lacking in before. And so, as I say, there have been some improvements made there. Uh, color customization for the round buttons. So we'll uh, have a look at that as well. The next two don't really apply to me as I'm a Mac user rather than a Windows user. Uh, feature improvements to the sound custom action, Windows only. Uh, new open application custom action, Windows only. Although there is something that's a little bit similar to that as I can see it for the Mac as well, though. So we'll take a look at that. Easier login and authentication process. I've got to say, I didn't really notice much difference between this and the previous version and it wasn't something that I noticed was lacking. But if they've improved it, then uh, we've got to be happy about that, haven't we? So uh, there is that. So let's have a look, though, at this uh, uh, redesigned action panel and uh, what has changed there. I did kind of get all excited about this when I first uh, saw that it was in the release notes. Uh, and then when I came over to the action panel, I thought, well, it looks pretty similar to the way it did before, actually. And so I, my heart sank a little bit. But as I've dug in, uh, it's raised a little bit again. <laughs> so they have actually made some improvements. Um, so what we had before is, uh, first of all, these down the uh, this column here are the different plugins. Uh, previously, they were in a row along the top, so uh, they changed the position of it. And when I say my heart sank a little bit, it's because it still seemed to me that they had a very similar layout to the way that they got before. And this was one of the issues that I had with the previous versions of the software. If you want to assign, for example, a keyboard shortcut um, to, the, uh, to one of the buttons, um, previously, uh, and still it is here now like this, but there is a, an easier way that we'll come to, um, you would have gone down to, let's say, keyboard, uh, and let's say you want to type the keystroke, I don't know, uh, Command K. <laughs> this one's for Keely. Uh, Command K. Then uh, you'd have to go down this list and alphabetical order Alphabetical order is logical at times, but it's not logical here because as I scroll down looking for the K key, and this is the way we had to do it before, um, you go through all of these different things. And they're, they're, first of all, they all begin with the, the word key because <laughs> it's telling you it's a keystroke. But here, like we've got the E key. And then you would think, what comes after E? It would be F. Well, actually, no, it's N, then equals, then escape. Uh, then you've got F. G, no, it's F1, F10, F11, F12, F13, and so on. So although technically, yeah, they've just been ordered alphabetically, it's not the most logical way to do things by any stretch. And I always thought, wouldn't it be so much simpler if we could just drag and drop an action uh, like you can do in Stream Deck, and then you select, and the action would be, you know, keystroke, and then you select what the keystroke that you want to be is. And so it was never really obvious exactly how you would do that uh, before. And this, I feel, uh, just sort of clutters up the space. You could obviously also search, but let's say we were searching for the K key, and I just type K in there. Well, unfortunately, it has very kindly highlighted every K in every action because every action begins with the word key. So uh, sometimes the search works and sometimes it falls down on things like that. So anyway, this is the way it was done before. I don't know why they've left all of these uh, these actions still in here, because now there is a much simpler way to do that. Uh, and there's a couple of ways of ac accessing it. So first of all, clicking up here in the custom, we did have this custom before. I feel like they've really simplified the layout of this now, though, um, because uh, as well as having all of your stored custom actions, so ones that you've created before are down here, um, they do have these kind of shortcuts as well at the top to all of these common things that you might want to do and it really does cover a lot of the uses that you might have for the loop deck as well so for example uh, here we've got shortcuts so the example that i was just talking about command k uh, if i just click on a uh, shortcut here it brings up this extra panel at the bottom which is where we're going to create the shortcut so i could uh, come down here and i could just type the letter k uh, do i want to add a modifier yes i want to put command so now that is now uh, command k uh, and let me just type in here uh, let me just put in Keely here, like that. <laughs> so then if I, uh, I could add an icon to it as well. I won't bother with that just for now. Uh, so then I click on create uh, and then I close that down. And you can see now in my custom stored actions, we've now got this uh, custom action, which is command K basically. Uh, and I could now drag this and drop it onto any particular button. Uh, we've also got a really easy access to go to uh, a web page. So if you want to create a shortcut for a web page, we can do that there. Uh, let's just uh, do that like that. So now we've got a shortcut to the uh, Take One Tech webpage. Uh, click on Create. 
and then also an application. So this is one uh, that was a bit of a sticking point for me before was if you come into the uh, desktop actions, the ones related to the system, uh, we've got this activate here, which sounded like, you know, activate an application. And indeed it could activate Audition, Illustrator, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, and so on, uh, all the Creative Suite apps. Um, but there wasn't one just a generic, you know, open any other app. There was a way to do it, but it was a bit laborious. But now we've got in here, um, this one down here, run application. So now if I wanted to uh, run, uh, well, let's just pick an application out of the folder. Uh, it just happens to go to Premiere Pro. So click on that. Uh, that now is going to open Premiere Pro. Uh, one thing that is a bit of a shame, it doesn't pull in the application icon like you get in, uh, in Stream Deck when you select to open an application. It just automatically pulls in the application. So click on Create. And there you go. So now uh, what I've got is I've got a few different uh, a few different actions that I've just created very simply from here, uh, as well as the run for run application. You've also got a uh, macro so we can create macros and also the uh, dial adjustments. We had these before. This is what was in the custom before. Uh, we've also got text. So if you want to create a text snippet, press a button and it will just expand the text snippet uh, again, like we've got on uh, Stream Deck. That's easy to access now. Uh, and then sound, so we can come and just pick a particular sound file and then it will uh, it will play that as well. So we've got those very simply in there. We're going to create those custom actions. Then they are stored down here uh, and then we can drag and drop. But what they've done is they've actually gone one step further. That's already an improvement on, on how it was before. Uh, but then what they've done is they've added this ability to uh, just click on any button. Uh, and actually, we've got a shortcut in here to do all of these things as well. So uh, macro, shortcut, run, web page, sound, text, and so on. So if I did want to just run a web page uh, from this particular button, then it's literally just opened up that panel down there, uh, type in the website, click on OK. It's then automatically assigned it to that button. So you can actually just go through here, creating action directly from the button so in, in some ways that's even more streamlined than uh, I was hoping for <laughs> um, that is a great uh, improvement to the user interface it's the one of the biggest sticking points I had it was the reason why uh, I could never really recommend this device to uh, you know friends and family I'll always recommend the stream deck it's so easy and intuitive to use uh, however this was a bit of a sticking point that I felt like it was just I, I just knew I'd be getting tech support questions with it because it, it baffled me for a, a while but this is an improvement Let's have a look at some of the other things that they've improved then. Um, and then uh, and then we'll get onto where I think they still need to do a bit of work because I'm still not going to be recommending it, I'm afraid. So one thing that I mentioned uh, in that little intro was uh, you can change the color of these buttons. It's these buttons down here. Uh, previously, they just automatically assigned whatever colors to these buttons. But now you can see we've got this little color picker. Just hover over any of these buttons, uh, click on here, uh, and then we can just choose any color that we want for the buttons. So that's just a nice little bit of customization. Uh, and the way that that uh, changes is if I just show you, there we go. So we now got the little red button is just there. It's the color that's showing up in the center where the, uh, the number is on the button. That's where that actually shows up. Um, there they show it obviously around the outside. It would be nice if the buttons did glow like that around the outside, but actually it's the number in the middle. So, uh, but anyway, that's how you change the color. Um, so what else have they uh, changed on here? Uh, they've also got the dial adjustments as well. So we can create a new one of those uh, and assign it to the uh, dials. Uh, it is much easier as well now to actually just drag and drop these and move them around. Whereas before it was a little bit more uh, tricky than that. Um, but one of the areas where I think that this is still just, uh, well, really falling down for me. <laughs> I'm sorry to bring a little bit of negativity into this, but technically we've got all of this power here for all of these different applications. And I think that the way that they've got this set up in terms of the plugins and the access to them, the profiles and the workspaces and pages uh, is a little bit uh, unnecessarily bloated and also uh, prohibitive in terms of uh, setting it up exactly as you want to use it. What am I talking about? Well, uh, comparing to Stream Deck, once again, and I'm sorry to keep making the comparison, but <laughs> I feel like Stream Deck have nailed so much that this is falling short on. It's a, a worthy comparison. In Stream Deck, you've got different profiles, and then you've got multiple pages within those profiles. So a profile being a particular use case you've got for it, and then uh, pages being different uh, sort of pages of here. Like uh, over here, I've got page one, I've got these icons, I've got these icons on page two, page three, uh, page four and page five. So I've just created a little blank one here. So it means you can, uh, you know, swipe through and I can do that with my finger, just swiping on the device to swipe through pages. Uh, and then this is just a single profile. 
Well, in Stream Deck, in a Loop Deck rather, they've also got these things called workspaces. And to me, a workspace is more like a kind of profile within a profile. So uh, although I'm in what I've called Alex profile, I've just created another one in here called Zoom. Uh, it's actually just blank, but <laughs> it's effectively almost just like another profile. So I can just swipe between those uh, different pages. Now, if I want to use some of the uh, other applications that have got plugins for the loop deck for example we've got plugins for after effects adobe audition uh, final cut pro illustrator photoshop and all those kind of things and in fact they all come built in and these profiles have been custom made for you which in theory is great isn't it if i go over to the uh, let's just take adobe audition so i'm now in the adobe audition profile uh, and we are in <laughs> the Adobe Audition profile, and we're in the home workspace. And in the home workspace, uh, we've basically got these few actions. Now I can uh, then uh, go over, instead of home, I could go into editing. So if I was doing some editing, then it would go into the editing workspace. And as you can see in the editing workspace, uh, we've got nine different pages of actions. So I can just swipe through all these, uh, and we can see all the different actions that we've got in the editing uh, workspace. Uh, and then we can go over here, we can go to the track states and mixer. So as you're changing around in the application, it's opening up all of these different things to you. You can see how many, uh, surely hundreds over multiple pages and in multiple workspaces, you've got hundreds of different actions that you can use with Adobe Audition. And indeed, if you come over to the side here, uh, you can see in our list of uh, plugins, we've now got the Adobe Audition plugin there. And look at all these. These are all the actions that, in theory, we can uh, trigger with our Loop Deck. So that is great. It's just like, isn't it, in the Stream Deck, where you can download a plugin, you can open the plugin, and you've got all of the different actions at your disposal. The only problem is with Ecamm, with uh, I should say, <laughs> sorry, with Stream Deck. Uh, if I have the Ecamm Live plugin, uh, or I have the uh, the Soundboard, or I have the Zoom plugin, I can still create any profile that I want and use all of those different actions. However, if I want to create my own custom profile uh, and use these order Adobe Audition uh, actions that have been created here, I can't actually access them. So if I come back to uh, my main profile, let's say I just want to create my own profile that's got a few actions for Adobe Audition, a few actions for Ecamm Live, a few actions for something else, uh, spread over a few different pages uh well guess what i can't actually access those adobe audition plugin actions uh you would think if i came up here to where the little plugins uh, toggle thing is up here you would think i'd just be able to toggle it on or off just like i can toggle uh these ones these are a few of the built-in ones for midi spotify twitch philips hue and so on i can toggle those on or off here uh, just like you can do in the Stream Deck, for example. So in Stream Deck, I can come over to the little toggle uh, and there you go. I've toggled OBS off, but if I did want to see those, I could toggle them on uh, and then they will just appear at the bottom. I can come in here, I can toggle them off uh, and they disappear again. So we've kind of sort of got that functionality in the Loop Deck um, because I can toggle these ones on and off. But where are the Adobe Edition uh, ones? Where are the uh, the Adobe Photoshop? Where are any other plugins? Um, you can come up to this little cogwheel up at the top here, which is the overall settings for plugins. Uh, click on that one. And that brings in the add-on manager for all of the different plugins, the add-ons. Uh, and you can see here that it's telling me that all of these things are ready. I've apparently got the Ableton Live is ready. The Adobe After Effects is ready. The Audition is ready uh, and so on. So these things are all technically ready to use. And yet they are nowhere to be seen and certainly nowhere to be able to be to access them from here, just in this profile that I'm creating themselves. They've kind of really just sandboxed all of these different uh, actions that they've created uh, within these profiles that they've created. Now, the way that they are envisaging you using this is you're going to have this thing called dynamic mode switched on. And it's under this heading called application profiles. So under application profiles, if you have dynamic mode switched on, then as you are switching from one application to another, it will be switching the profile to the profile relevant to that application. And then you'll have access to all of those actions, which is fine if that's how you want to do things. But I just personally don't want my, street, my uh, loop deck, I should say, switching based on the application that I'm using. I want to be able to set it up as I want it with whatever actions I want to have in there uh, so that I can have full control over it. Why is that uh, such an issue? Well, 
I spend a lot of time on Zoom calls uh, and I'm often using some of these creative apps whilst I'm on a Zoom call. So it wouldn't be unreasonable to expect that I want to be able to uh, uh, have my uh, Zoom controls on the screen whilst I'm on a Zoom call. And just because I've opened up one of the creative apps, I don't want it just automatically hopping over to all of the actions for that particular app on my uh, my loop deck. I don't necessarily want it to change profile. I just like to be able to set it up the way that I want it with all of those actions. And the fact that they are all technically there somewhere, they're all in the software, it knows what all of these actions are, but I'm just not able to physically assign them to uh, any profile I want. Uh, just seems a little bit short-sighted. And by a little bit, a little bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> it's actually led to me not really using the loop deck. I use it only for um, uh, Ecamm Live, basically. And so I have this set up uh, as my profile for Ecamm, where I can control audio uh, volumes, and my, my audio levels, I should say. Uh, and then it's really more of a companion to my stream deck. And in fact, if we have a look at this, it's mounted above my stream deck. So this has got some extra... Um, extra scenes in Ecamm Live that I use. Uh, I've got this one to end my recordings. These control some of the levels in Ecamm itself. Um, but the Stream Deck does most of the heavy lifting. And it certainly does all of the heavy lifting as far, far as my productivity is concerned. And why is that? It is because, uh, not because it is necessarily better as a device than uh, Loop Deck. It's because of the friction involved in actually setting things up. If I want to set something up just quickly uh, and know that I can just easily hop in and out of uh, different profiles with uh with as i can with the stream deck it's so much simpler for me to do it in there uh and so you know when it comes down to it having both devices has been great using those uh, those dials uh, but i still always defer to or revert back to the uh, stream deck and when it comes to recommending one of these devices to people uh should they get a stream deck should they get a loop deck if you need the dials <laughs> for precision control of certain things, you know, in creative apps, if you're a heavy user of creative apps, uh, definitely uh, recommend the Loop Deck for that. If you're just really focused in on those apps all the time, uh, certainly the dials are handy for that. Uh, but for just general use, it's going to be Stream Deck every time for me. So I'm really looking forward to future updates because I feel like they've made some steps in the right direction, but they just still need to sort out some of these usability issues in my mind. Uh, it's very telling that I know quite a few people who have bought loop decks and more than half of the people <laughs> that I know who have bought loop decks have sent them back. So uh, it's, not, uh, it's not just me who feels this way, unfortunately. So it is a bit of a shame, but uh, as I say, it's all steps in the right direction. So I hope that you found this little overview of some of the new features uh, helpful and uh, hopefully it is a sign of more future positive steps to come now i'll leave a link to uh, some of my other videos related to loop deck and stream deck over on the right hand side as well so i'll see you in there